Welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa and time to look at what the papers this morning, the newspapers have for us. Um, it's a Monday and uh, to be expected a lot. Uh, we packed into the papers today and uh, we have joining us uh, public affairs analyst uh, Opunabo Inkotaria. Mr. Inkotaria, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, good morning, Kofi. Good morning, Nigeria. Fantastic, fantastic. Let's dive right in, uh, beginning with the leadership on Monday. Uh, bold headline from the leadership this morning, 2023 presidency, uncertainty over Jonathan's PDP membership with the following writers. Ex-president has not resigned from the party aid. We're not aware of his res resignation, PDP, and I'm not sure if he still our member says Sule Lamido. Quite interesting uh, debate on whether Good Luck Jonathan is a member of the PDP or not. Uh, Miss Sinkotaria, is Dr. Good Luck Jonathan still a member of the People's Democratic Party as far as you're concerned? You know, you, you know, when you ask the question, I think, uh, <laughs> <laughs> President Lula Jonathan was my principal, so <laughs> I'm serious of all his uh, movements and uh, political uh, uh, maneuvers. Well, as I said that, I don't know for now. It's a thing of uh, guesstimation, so to speak. I don't know if he's still a member of the PDP or if he has defected to the APC. Because there was a time when the air was so filled with news of his uh, likely defection to APC. And that is to uh, allow the South South, that was the argument, the South South uh, complete stadium that was truncated by the election of uh, President Muhammad Buhari. Because, you know, like I keep telling people, good luck was an accidental thing. Yeah, he became a president as a result of the demise of Yaradwe. And so he served that, which was a constitutional requirement, which was a constitutional obligation. No other person would have been nice as president, but good luck, Jonathan. Even as that, that was almost been frustrated, if you recall, by a lot of persons who felt the northerners should continue. And uh, uh, there was some left sort of crisis until the National Assembly eventually amended that part of the Constitution. And so good luck in there. And they felt he took the place of the north and frustrated his re-election in 2015. Now, we are in it. They what they want to do is, uh, a lot of people also have this argument that it is not a fact. There is no such thing as North Central, North East, North, North West. They don't believe in that. When they say North, they are talking of the North. When they say South, they are talking of what we call the Southwest, the South South, and the South East. That, that is the way they look at it. So if good luck should come for another four years, then it will go back to the north. That is the thing. That's why people were angry for good luck to return to office. Because definitely he wasn't going to spend more than four years in office. If he returned. Because that's the cost of provision, maximum get to death. And for four, four years, that would have been eight years. Then it will go back to the north. For those who believe that they are politically smart, they're not going to. That is the calculation because any other southerner will do another eight years, and they are in a hurry that okay. the president should go back to the north. So we don't know for now. And given the frequent visit of good luck, Jonathan to the, to Asura, okay. you know, a lot of people yes have started weaving interpretations, all kinds of interpretations into that visit, and they see Mr. President being very comfortable with good luck taking over from him. And which is also in tandem with the northern, somehow, or coincidentally in tandem with the northern calculation that okay. where is good to spend just four years and to come back to work. But I cannot categorically say for now, even okay. to the middle, it's not sure. So, so Mr. Mr. Kutaria, why, why do we have, yes. sorry to interrupt you, sir, but why, why do we have this, okay. this, this speculation, uh, bearing in mind uh, the former president, Dr. Jonathan, has not maybe like Olushe Gwambasanjo did, uh, torn his PDP membership card in public. He has not made any public statements resigning Every, from the party. Everybody, <laughs> everybody must not be an ambassador to tear his card in public. Uh, <laughs> for sure, I mean, uh, is that even necessary? 
It's either you say you've designed for quality, so I think that is the You don't need to start carrying your cards. I mean, that was super clear. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well, I was at that. And like I said, the frequent visit to Asso Rock, you know, the good luck itself has not set in. And that also, to a very large extent, tried to strengthen that rumor because he has never denied nor accepted. And in a situation where you don't deny, I mean, there is this belief that if there was no ounce of truth in it, you would have come out to say, no, I am not going to confess. But you kept silent. And so it is like, well, let's see, we are still negotiating. Let me see if uh, I'm going to get, if I'm promised the ticket by the president, I will defend. Because if there is no, he didn't deny it. And that is what has strengthened the belief that, oh, the negotiations are still on. Some say, is that if he wants the president's 100% assurance that he's going to give him the ticket for him to defect. You know, then we even have that rumor. I think. So it is the frequent visit of Mr. President, the former president to Asu Rock, and the non denier of this fact or rumor that he was going to defect that has made more persons believe that negotiations are ongoing and is just waiting for assurance from Mr. President. Okay, interesting. Well, governor, even governor Wiki said, if Governor Wiki, even Governor Wiki said, if good luck, Jonathan defends to the APC is not going to support it. Which means a lot of people will read minutes into that, that probably the governor, coming from his uh, 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 position, would have gotten wind of Governor Jonathan's possible defection to the APC. So all those things, I'm not to talk of the ordinary man who doesn't have access to certain information, will have to be from all this. You know, it's just, that, that's why a lot of people believe that he might be better. Open up one, Kuchari. How do you perceive... Um uh, we are all aware you were in River State as I was. We've had a, uh, a you know a frequent interaction, you know, on 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 radio. Um, your own political yeah. history. Well, let me not go into that. You are an analyst here, but um, you you have knowledge. You have knowledge in in in, in politics. You have been an insider. Um, you're aware of, of the 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 kickback or the the backlash. Let me say, uh, or the the uh, rejection of the All Progressives Congress. Um, by those in the south, south, and southeast of Nigeria in the 2015 elections, and the massive overwhelming votes for Dr. Goodluck Jonathan um, in in those elections. We go to 2019. There was also massive rejection uh, of uh, the APC in the presidential vote um, because uh, there was a massive rejection of the president, uh, the APC in the presidential vote, while the PDP won. Um, the 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 presidential vote in the south south and southeast. Um, if 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 it turns out now we, we don't know what will happen, but if it turns out that what Sule Lamido is saying is true, and if it turns out that um, Dr. Jonathan pops up uh, on the ticket of the APC, do you suspect that Southerners will will change their approach towards the All Progressives Congress? Very quickly, please. You know, you know, yes, you know the the, the um, uh, situation you talked about is twenty. 15 and 2018. The truth about it is that uh, in 2015, a lot of us believe that Governor Jonathan is one of us, even though uh, his uh, presidency uh, did not positive, positively impact the South. And that much he admitted when he said, if I return to an office, if I'm there, I'll do more to the South. I apologize. It's so that to be for that of the So, um, it, was, <coughs> it was like a filial support. You know, the support you give to a brother, that was the support you gave to Good Luck Jonathan in 2015. And that's why the whole South South, because we saw him as one of us, that's why the whole South South voted for Good Luck Jonathan. They rejected the atheists. It really had nothing to do with the party. It really had nothing to do with ideology. Not, not party, not ideology. It had to do with individual. And that's why I tell people that I am one of those that condemn the Supreme Court judgment. That you vote for parties that are not for individuals. Because in Nigeria, we vote for individuals. If today, Good Lord Jonathan, the first to the 80s, all those who rejected Good Lord Jonathan, who rejected the uh, uh, 80s in 2015 and 2018, will vote for Good Lord Jonathan from the South South. I can tell you that. Of course, I'm not saying 
country to be 100 percent. But majority of people because they say this is our hope. So let us encourage them. Let us assist them to win. The same thing with the 2018. It all has to do with the individual and where he comes from, not necessarily the party. No. Okay, interesting analysis, uh, Open Abu Nkutara. Thank you very much for that. Let's um, let's stay with uh, the the leadership newspaper, and uh, of course there, there was a lot of uh, a brouhaha, uh, permit my use of the word, uh, last week when um, Bola Ahmed Tinubu went or departed to the UK. Um, first, uh, some sources were telling the newspapers that uh, he was going to see his doctor. Some sources. Then his spokesman came out and said no. He's going for some meetings, political meetings. And then some other source said, oh, he's going to see his family. Um, um, but but we, we were told he'll be back after seven days. And some Nigerians, especially Lagosians, said, aha, let's see if he can come back after seven days. And then if he doesn't come back after seven days, we can begin to talk. Tinubu has returned into the country, back to Nigeria, after seven days in the UK. Mm. So what do you want to Talk about it. Was, that he went to see his doctor. That he went to see his doctor. There was a rejection. It, it was rejected by his spokesman. <laughs> you know, he said he went for, for yeah. reasons, definitely for political reasons. Okay. Tinibu, we all know. I mean, his public knowledge that Tinibu is not well. He's not fit. Tinibu is sick, and uh, because of his presidential ambition, you know, and get, <laughs> remembering what what especially what we are going through with President Muhammadu Buhari. So a lot of people are trying to hurt that part of it. They don't want that, the public to know because that would be an outright rejection of the Tinubu. We don't want another Buhari that will be 24 hours out of the country or 48 hours out of the country. Out of 365 days, you have a president that will spend just maybe, maybe maximum of 100 days or 50 days in Nigeria. He's either out on medical trip or he's going on one conference that has no impact, no positive impact on the nation. Having said that, my brother, to answer your question, categorically, unequivocally, Tinibu was on a way to Britain on, on medical trip, and Tinibu is sick, and no Nigerian should go for color. Tinibu. Mr. Sengutari, I, I don't know, we, we don't have his medical records. Um, it, it, it wouldn't be fair for us to say he's sick. We all saw, we all Maybe we can, we can, we, you can say you that's feel, you can say you feel he's not fit. You know, just but, recently, yeah. just recently, we, we all are aware that he was in the hospital hospitalized for how long? From UK to the US. The president visited it. Initially, they denied it until the president, vice president, all kinds of persons visited. We all are aware of that. That was just recently. And now he's gone again. When you look at Tinibu, Tinibu, you know Tinibu. In fact, I told somebody that the, the sickness is just manifesting. Tinibu has been sick. Even when you listen to the way he talks, Tinibu has been sick. Tinibu as a government, even from Tinibu now. That's the truth. So, well, 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 well. You not be given it. Uh, I agree, we're on national television. Yes, go, absolutely. Go free, absolutely. Absolutely. We're on national television. But let me say this that it is my conviction. Let me tell you that it is my better, conviction. Better. That Bola Ahmed Tinibu is not sound medically. Okay. He's not fit. He That's what you're saying. Sound. Yeah. And medically sound. What mm. fit? What they will fit? I don't even fit. That, that is for a purpose. Well, he's not medically sound, and as a result of that, not fit for the president. Okay, so you, you're saying, I, 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 I think we've taken away the, the word sick. <laughs> we've taken it here, and we're using sound, fit. Sound. I, in fact, <laughs> you know, you know, uh, we've been having this conversation, it's been on and off, you know, even on, on radio, and um, we have to look for different yeah. words to describe these things, like in fit, sound, even stout is a word that can be used in that, yeah. I never knew yeah. before. Yeah, exactly. no. Okay, yeah. interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Um, let's um, uh, let's go. Let's go. A family curbs media coverage of aspirants' visit to IBB. This this seems a bit worrying. Um, you're aware, Mister. I didn't get that. I didn't get that. Okay, at, at the top of the leadership newspaper, family yeah. curbs yeah. media coverage of aspirants' visit to IBB. Aspirants being a plural there. Um, you're aware of um, yeah. the the godfatherly role, of godfatherly role that uh, IBB has yeah. been playing over the years, and um, it, as it was in the last election, with this time too, it seems that everyone who goes there will get his endorsement. You know, he's endorsed Osibajo, he's endorsed Tinubu, 
Um, he's endorsed Ojiz Okalo before now, but not really technically endorsing Ojiz Okalo. But he keeps, he seems to be endorsing anyone who goes there. Um, now we're hearing his family is curbing media coverage of the visit of those aspirants. Do you think this is something worrying? Uh, probably as a result of the backlash, you know, just like you said. Just like you said, he has endorsed A, he has endorsed B, he has endorsed C. And I think it's gradually becoming an embarrassment. So that's why the family felt this stuff. And um, we are national telly. I don't want to say, uh, make some snide comments, uncomplimentary things concerning IDB. Uh, I strongly believe. Uh, you, you can imagine what I'm thinking. Uh, <laughs> the, man is not, uh, the man is the man is no longer. Uh, I will, <laughs> he's not. He's, he's, he's to he, say, but, okay. But, but, but let me just say, uh, I don't think he's, uh, he's still intellectual. Okay. Now. Okay. So you you're trying to say I can help you. You're trying to say he's not young anymore. Uh, thank you. You have said it. He's not young anymore. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's not young anymore. I don't even want to talk about senility. No, 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 no. Okay. I yeah, think people he's will get the point. Yeah. He's not the Maradona of, of we used to know, or the evil genius we used to know. So let me just leave it at that. Okay. I so, think the family has sent one or two inconsistencies and so on, and they are just trying to protect the image of the man, I think, mm. and the reputation of the man, I think. That's, okay. that's what I'm talking about. All right. yes, and a lot of people feel seen as having that class, you know. I believe you can give that to him. Uh, he, he may have endorsed a lot of it, but he will secretly work for somebody. And he has his own full rush, you know. I mean, like the Salams and so on. They are too loyal to IBB. What, what, what do you and make of yeah? What, what do you make of this whole you know? I mean, there's been talk over the years in Nigeria that um, there are kingmakers in the land. These are the people who, if you are going to be president, they determine who will be the next president. And um, IBB's name yeah. has always been mentioned in that breath. Is this really yeah, the case? Is this really the case? IBB has a reach, but I think it's been for now overrated. For now, this has been over it. I really don't have that cloud that a lot of people believe he has. No more. I don't think IDB can influence, aside the United State government, I don't think IDB can influence any Northern government. Uh, they, will, they will respect it, no doubt about that, because of the Northern culture. You know, they will respect it. I ought to be respecting them. But I don't think it can really influence uh, political decisions. I don't think so. I don't think so. Hmm. Sincerely, I don't think. I don't think it has that power. They influence political decisions. All not right. at all. I, I, I watched the recent interview. Um, so it could just be out of courtesy. It could just be out of courtesy. Hmm. The basic. And, of course, for media bleeds. Okay. I, I, I watched the recent interview, an online medium put out uh, with, with uh, Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida, right there at the hilltop, you know, um, or rock top residents, uh, these former presidents like uh, Obasanjo as well, they seem to uh, like to stay in, in hilly or rocky environments. Um, <laughs> let's not go into that. Um, but um, um, he, he, he sounded really... Well, I, I know you know what it takes to, to correct buildings there. <laughs> I wish I did. You tell me, but let's not go there. Let's not go there. Yeah, but but he he sounded really um in 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 control, um really aware of of national issues and really okay despite his age. Yeah, yeah, but like you just said, I asked you, Kofi, you have just one person, one position, and only one person can uh, 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 occupy that position. And you endorse twenty percent. What does that speak? You know, what does that really speak? But in another way, they can also argue that if not we really, really didn't endorse them, but probably what he did was to uh, extol their qualities, their virtues. I think the only mm -hmm. person I think he actually endorsed was the vice president. I think the rest is just extol their virtues. I don't know what he actually. Okay, all right. Have to, I have to check. I, <laughs> I have to cross check what he said to Tinubu. Um, I may have to check what he so, said. He said to Tinubu. Well, you know. I didn't even know what he said to Tinubu. <laughs> but Tinubu was just on. Uh, 
Well, let's go to Scotia. Oh. Okay. All right. Let's let's leave it at that. She has so much money. She has so much money to play around. So <laughs> Okay, um, um, we will not go into too much of the sports per se, but there's one aspect of uh, the Senegalese defeat of Egypt. You know, Senegal last night won their yeah, first. Come again, Kofi. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Trust me. Trust me. No, no. Trust, trust me. Well, well, you've not invited me to play golf with you, so you know. <laughs> but anyway, um, 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 one of the 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 noticeable aspects of this. Uh, African Cup of Nations final, and I'm going to get you here, Punabo, is the fact that Paul Beer was in the stadium. And um, when it was time for the cup to be handed over to um, the Senegalese captain for him to take to his team so they could lift it up, um, the FIFA president and the CAF president told the Senegal captain to follow them to the stands, the presidential stand, where Paul Beer was seated. He didn't come down to hand the cup over to the Senegal captain. So they had to climb up the steps to the presidential stand, and then Paul Bia stood up and gingerly, um, they held, he didn't even hold the cup, he just touched it as the FIFA president held it with the cup president. Um, what's your take on, 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 but Cameroon has organized a successful competition with many beautiful stadiums being built. What's your take on the Paul Bia situation in the light of the AFCON that has just held and what we saw last night, like I've just uh, described to you? Paul Bia is sick. No doubt about that. But I rather die in office. It's not very bad. It's not shaky. It's not shaky. So, and um, the officials are quite aware. That's why I would just say for Bia to walk down. Most times he's been assisted. It's helping to move. For Bia is sick. He, uh, so he, he couldn't have expected him to walk down. That's why they told him to walk up to the presidential seat to hand the cup over to for him to hand the cup over to them. But there is no well. There's no well. It has nothing to do with uh, arrogance or power. No, 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 not really that. Not really that. It's not well. It's not medically fit. Hmm. He told me. Uh, you yeah, don't... So he did it to be assisted. Yeah, he did it to be He's sick. He's sick. Yeah. Any, any decent, honorable man would have just left off of but the man wants to die in office. I, I pray he dies in office. But I pray he dies so too. And I, I, don't, I, I didn't see any gray hair on and him. No, <laughs> I, I rest. Yeah, because he dies. He's dying here. <laughs> or, or maybe he doesn't have gray hair. God created him that way. But, <laughs> or he dies. Uh, you know, if the president is using a die, he will use the super die. That he will not even know if he uses the die. But for me, I think. For me, I think. It, it was it was the the president of Equatorial and Guinea. Don't forget, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't forget that um, um, I'm not saying he lied, but don't forget that a man at 60 could be as weak as a man who is 80. Who are you referring to? It all depends. It, it all depends. It all depends on individuals. I don't know. You think? <laughs> it, all on the, it all depends on the individuals. You know. Well, yeah, he's actually not well. And I don't think he has ever denied it. Of course, I don't live in Cameroon, so I wouldn't know. So, so you, 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 are saying, you are saying Nigeria Nigeria should not um, have a Paul Bia situation in 2023. I'm, I'm trying to understand whether that's what you're saying. We are, we, we are, we are, we are having close to a Paul Bia situation. Any situation worse than this will be calamitous. Because even the situation we find ourselves in, I mean, uh, it's quite, it's, we've tried to manage it, and God has helped us. But you can imagine the uh, uh, effect of having such a president. I'm very sorry to say. So, if it will be as well, it's just a step ahead of what we have in Nigeria. Hmm. So, I will no man will wish uh, Nigeria a Paul Bia president. God forbid. And that's what <laughs> we are saying. We don't want, we don't want a Tinibu. That's why we say we don't want a Tinibu. Because that will be nothing. Eight years of Tinibu will take us to Paul Bia. Well, well, well. Last time I checked, he's he's in his sixties. Um, I know, of course, you can yeah, argue that yeah. his daughter, yeah. his daughter recently celebrated. Um, is it that he he was nine years old or so? I can't remember quite you the know, gap when know, he gave birth to his daughter. I, you know, you know, I, I, I don't know. know. Is the JJ of Kocha's side? JJ of Kocha's image of my brother celebrated his fifty-second birthday a few days ago. JJ of Kocha is celebrating for the seven years. 
You know, you understand that kind of thing. Let's move straight to the Punch newspaper with the following headlines. Um, the big one there, NIMC, a portal breaks down. Banks, telcos, passport issuance suffer. And with the following riders, downtime enters sixth day. MTN Glow Airtel, others suspend same replacement and acquisition. Immigration may rebook passport applicants' appointments as glitch stalls, NIN verification. And telcos lose millions, customers' verification affected. NIMC apologizes as engineers battle crisis. At the top of the front page, investors commit 3.36 trillion naira to federal government bonds in 12 months. Oversubscription hits 1.6 one trillion naira details on page 32 of the punch newspaper external reserves slide to four months low as at 39.98 billion dollars federal government school feeding suffers setback pupils wait in vain for vendors uh, i was paid for only three months in 2021 says contractor and fg making payments for school feeding ministry insists ICPC scores UCH, NCDC, 24 hours low on ethics compliance. All platform explosions, seven missing, one dies, three alive, says FEM. Really sad one there. Um, white American prostitute jailed 12 months for 57.8 million Naira fraud in Quara State. That's bizarre. Uh, Ondo plans TSA implementation to block leakages, curtail fraud. Police arrest Beninese alleged trans-border kidnapper recover 2.3 million naira. And at the bottom of the front page, Oyetola supporters lampoon Arabe Shola's ex-commissioner for attacking governor. Housewife 30 stabs 18-year-old husband's nephew to death over a broken mirror in Ogu. Bizarre yet again. Dismissed DPO fleeing kingpin arrested. NDLEA seizes 22, 160 kg cocaine in Lagos Port. Those are stories coming from the Punch newspaper. Let's go straight to the Nation newspaper with the following headlines on the front page. The big one there. ASU begins mobilization for another strike in Vastis. The writer, final decision slated for February 14. What a day. Uh, to choose for final decision. Uh, Oni's, or rather, Oni's defection to Abga unsettles PDP. Fireshay seeks unity. Oni's defection to Abga unsettles PDP. Fireshay seeks unity. General Minima's passport, passport seized over probe into 3.8 billion Naira fraud. And another one, money leads Senegal to Afghan glory. Antiku abandoned Benue in trying time, says O Tom. We take two more stories from the Nation newspaper. Uh, Ondo government's firm disagree, or Ondo government firm disagree on OML 108 fire report. Five killed in car clash. And finally, no territory under terror group, federal government insists. No territory under terror group, federal government insists. And there's a picture of Mr. President Mahmoud Buhari uh, in Ethiopia at the AU summit, having a handshake with the Ethiopian president. Let's move straight to the next newspaper. And this time it's the Daily Independent with a big one. Uh, regulation, damaged FX, market may undervalue banks regulation damaged fx market and may undervalue banks uh, with a rider analysts say with basel three lower liquidity lenders at risk of pressured margins at the top of that front page apc convention buhari yields to governors as consensus candidates emerge this week uh, marriage that produced apc not working says ex-governor FGM, Nigeria has the third highest number of mutilated women, says UNICEF. Um, you have insecurities left Southeast Baron, says Esima president. FPSO in Feno, cops recovered three crew members alive. Sepko, really sad one there. 
Um, federal government delists three privatized, privatized universities, or rather, three privatized firms from BPE monitoring and Buhari Ethiopian PM Ahmed meet over rising spate of coups in Africa. We go back to Puna Boy Kotaira now, who is still standing by uh, to give his expert analysis on the stories. Uh, Puna Boy Kotaira, let, let's stay with the Daily Independent and the uh, story on the top left corner of that front page. Um, the APC convention um, uh, is really a, a, a touchy issue and of course parallel um, uh, ex goes and chairman in different states. In some states, like Aquabo State, I think they had three um, party chairmen at a time um, after those par parallel congresses. Uh, it, the paper I seen President Buhari is yielding to uh, the governors as consensus candidates are emerging this week. What are your thoughts on, on what is going on ahead of the convention uh, expected to hold this month? Well, the, excuse me, the uh, uh, party has recognized its uh, elected chairman and they've been sworn in. So, in the eyes of the party, they are the chairman, I mean, uh, the committee, the various states, those that have been sworn in. But now, those that are agreed, I think uh, the party should reach out to them in order to assuage them, like they have been said. Otherwise, it's going to lead to mass defection from the party. It's not, it's not as if they have an option of either going to court, but I don't see anything really coming out of it. So, but that is not all about going to court. I mean, it's all about um, trying to smoothen out the rats in the party by approaching them, speaking with them. In the case of River State, I think it's going to be extremely difficult, if not impossible. I'm using River State as an example, because it depends on the genesis of the crisis and the depth of the crisis. Excuse me. The death of the crisis. When a, when a, a crisis is ego based, it becomes extremely difficult. But when it is ideological based, you can persuade to a very large extent. Superior reason to a very large extent could prevail with uh, the offending parties accepting whatever practice or the outcome in terms of uh, reconciliation, in terms of negotiation. But when it is uh, ego based, I can tell you that. Uh, the reasoning of the feeding party a bit louder. You know, it's a question of I will not capitulate because if I do, then uh, I, I rubbish myself, I rubbish my image, I rubbish my personality. So that is the problem in River State. Now you have two factions. I don't want to duplicate any faction, but you have two factions, two major factions. You have the Marxist Sabbath faction. You have the Rosemary uh, Amity faction. For example, I'm using that as an example. Now, the faction that is being sworn in the Rotary, uh, a major faction led by PK, Charles PK, uh, Emeka PK, sorry, PK. Now, this other faction definitely have an option of either going to court or there will be a mass defection because the hatred, there is this animosity that the Magnus faction will never ever want to see the Rotary and Major faction win. It happened in 2019 when they had to go to court, and as a result of that, APC was not allowed to fill the candidate in the election. And the situation has worsened. It has faster. There is no improvement worsened. So while a lot of people comment the Bumi led uh, reconciliation or caretaker committee that he has done this, he has done well, governors have defected. No, Bumi did not reach out to the governors to defect. The governors defected on their own because they believe that APC is a better ground for them. These are the issues that Bumi would have addressed. Because these issues are not new. They've been there. He would have called for the various factions and reconciled them. Even if it meant approaching Mr. President to have a meeting with them. That is hmm. Okay. The uh, government was defecting as well. Those governments that defected did not defect because of Bumi. They defected because they saw APC as a better ground. A ground that will water their own ambition, not because of Bumi. You know? So, if you, if you in summary, what I'm trying to do in summary is that approaching this convention, I mean, I see problems. Not that uh, these other ones that we are not inaugurated will want to cause any problem at the convention. I mean, you have security there. But if we are going beyond that, we are talking of, uh, we are trying to avoid attrition, reduction, location by mass defection from the party. Okay, and we, 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 we. Uh, we, 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 ha we have to pull the plugs now. Our, 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 our is it should, it should be doing. 
All right, we, we, we have to pull the plug now, Ponabo and Kotaro. But before you go, just in one sentence, can the APC surmount its challenges? Yes or no? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oponabon Katara has been our guest this morning on uh, Off the Press. Uh, he's a public affairs analyst. We appreciate the time. Up next, we have major discussions, but let's take a check at what happened today in history. We'll be right back. <laughs>